Hello, thank you for watching our bariatric surgery information seminar here at Central Maine Medical Center. My name is Dr. Alvarez and I'm the medical director for the program here. The purpose of today's PowerPoint is really to give some information on obesity, what causes obesity, bariatric surgery, and how a bariatric surgery program works. Our team is composed of several people. There's myself, one of the bariatric surgeons, Dr. Blair Baldwin is one of our other bariatric surgeons. Danielle LaPlante is our physician assistant. And we have two registered dietitians here, Rachel and Dan, as well as a behavioral health specialist, Mia. Tracy is our bariatric coordinator and a uh, contact person for you throughout the program, as well as several other support staff here in the office. We are an accredited center here, which does mean that we are a preferred center for several insurance providers. Being an accredited center offers several benefits. Some of these benefits um, revolve around the kind of infrastructure that we have here, both for our program as well as in the hospital to help take care of you as a bariatric patient. This means that we have specialized training, particularly in bariatric surgery, that we take care of a certain number of patients a year, certain types of complexity of patients, and that we have dedicated staff, both within our office as well as within the hospital, that are knowledgeable about bariatric patients and the specialized details it takes to take care of people safely. So what is obesity? Obesity is a complex chronic disease that you have to deal with likely for your entire life. It results from excess body fat that one is carrying and this excess body fat then affects the body in a way that other medical problems are more likely to happen to somebody, causing them to be sicker and to have to take more medications. You'll commonly hear obesity spoken about in terms of BMI, which is the body mass index. And this is a number calculated off of your height and your weight. Not a perfect number, but a good value and one that's a standardized number uh, used to talk about the degree and severity of obesity. And when we talk about obesity in terms of potential for bariatric surgery, um, we talk about BMIs that are at least 35 and greater. If you feel like you're alone in regards to struggling with your weight, I assure you, you are not. In the United States alone, there's over um, one quarter of our adult population that is uh, classified in the obese categories. Over three quarters of our population of adults in the United States are either overweight or obese. And projections for how we as a population are going to deal with our weight show that we continue to struggle um, into the next several years. I assure you, you are not alone. A few decades ago, when we started tracking data um, through the CDC in the United States, there was either very little obesity reported or quite a few states that, quite frankly, had no data. Fast forward to 2017, and you can see that every state in our nation is struggling with obesity, and even the quote-unquote thinnest states still have um, close to 20% of their population struggling. This pattern, unfortunately, is going to continue to climb in the same direction. But what does this mean for you as a person, as an individual? The effects of obesity are many. Um, it leads to a chronic state of inflammation in your body, which makes you always feel tired, feel run down, feel achy, feel like you hurt, depletes your energy, it affects your metabolism, and it definitely has effects on your mental health and on your self-value. As I mentioned earlier, the effects of obesity um, on you as a person can be broken down into different categories, your medical health, your physical health, the economic impacts to you as well as the um, impacts to your mental health. I think this is a very important slide. This slide here breaks down every organ system in your body and how obesity affects it, the different um, medical problems that you may have. So take a minute and see what types of medical and health problems you may have and see how so many of these can potentially be related uh, to obesity and to weight. We often talk about obesity in terms of its effect on our um, medical health, the types of medical problems we may have, but it really cannot be um, overstated how much this has an impact on our mental and psychological health. 
Uh, Patients who are struggling with obesity tend to have higher rates of depression, low self-esteem. They tend, uh, unfortunately, to participate in more social isolation, feeling uncomfortable in public and public spaces and and, uh, conversing with other people in larger groups, and it certainly can affect their personal relationships as well. I mentioned earlier how obesity is a chronic state of inflammation, which always tends to lead people to feel a little run down, achy, and tired, um, able to do less things than maybe their friends and family. And uh, this therefore affects our activities of daily living, whether that's doing things with our kids, our grandkids, um, participating in hobbies and things that we enjoy. Um, These can all uh, be much more of a significant effort. And with that effort, we tend to stop doing them because it's just too hard. With all the impacts on you as a person, as an individual, on your medical health, your physical health, um, we see that comes at a financial cost too. Um, In the nation, we do spend a lot of money on medical problems that do have links to obesity. And as individuals, we tend to pay more too, whether that's for simple things such as um, higher grocery bills or other things such as more doctor's visits, hospitalizations, more medications, and all of this really adds up. Okay, so what can we do to help people who are struggling with their weight? Well, diets, exercise, weight loss programs. Um, There are a ton of fad diets that are out there that will promise really good results. Medications, either over-the-counter medications or uh, medications prescribed by medical providers. And lastly, bariatric surgery, which is what we're here to talk about today. And out of all of these different options, bariatric surgery is the most proven effective tool for weight loss over the long term for patients who are struggling with obesity, more than diet, more than exercise, medications, or any weight loss programs. Who should consider bariatric surgery? Well, we want you to have tried other things to try to lose weight in the past, meaning bariatric surgery should not be your first attempt at weight loss. Um, Hopefully you have tried diets, exercise, weight loss programs, other things that have either given you temporary success or um, maybe minimal success. There's also a requirement of your BMI. So Your BMI needs to be at least 35, between 35 and 40 with at least two medical problems that can be related to obesity, or a BMI of 40 and higher, and that 40 or higher does not require any medical problems to be related. So you could be 40 and higher with your BMI and you could be healthy otherwise and you would still qualify. You also need to be ready to go through a big program that's going to require some big lifestyle changes and be ready to make a long-term commitment to change. What are some other requirements for a candidacy for bariatric surgery? I mentioned the BMI requirements and I mentioned the attempts at weight loss in the past. You also must be uh, between the ages of 18 and 70 for our program. You must have no active substance abuse or any untreated mental health issues. Now, certainly a lot of us do have these things as part of our lives, and that doesn't mean that you're not a candidate, but as you are working through the program, um, we need to be getting rid of any substance abuse, um, getting rid of uh, any use of nicotine, um, and making sure that mental health is in a good, stable place because, as I mentioned before, this is a big program. It requires big changes, and we want you to be ready for that. Okay, so moving on, what types of bariatric surgery are there? There are two main operations, and the first one is gastric bypass. The second is called the sleeve gastrectomy. For certain patients who may have had some bariatric operations in the past, they may be candidates for revisional surgery in very specific situations. And there may still be patients who have gastric bands, and while we do not place bands anymore, we do manage them or remove them when indicated. We're going to go over each operation in more detail, but on the left is a picture of the sleeve gastrectomy. And sleeve gastrectomy, simply put, is surgery only on your stomach. On the right is the gastric bypass. And the gastric bypass is a more complex operation, dealing with making the stomach a little bit smaller, but also changing the anatomy of the intestines. 
Here at Central Maine Medical Center, we perform our operations minimally invasively, and this can be either laparoscopically or robotically. Either of these options are done through small incisions. You will have five small incisions on your abdomen that are about the size of your thumbnail. Laparoscopic surgery means we are operating through these small incisions using instruments we hold in our hands. Robotic surgery means we are operating through these small incisions using instruments um, through a technology uh, used by the robotic system that we as the surgeon are still operating, um, but allows us to have better dexterity, finer movements, and better visualization. So let's take a look first at the gastric bypass. The picture on the left shows your normal anatomy. When you eat, you swallow your food, it goes into your stomach, and then it travels down through your small intestine, followed by your large intestine. The picture on the right shows gastric bypass anatomy. So what we do here is we create a new small stomach pouch from your overall stomach. We cut the intestine and we bring one portion of the intestine up to this new small stomach pouch and we create another connection on the intestines further down. Therefore, the food and the nutrients that you take in are bypassing a portion of your stomach and the first portion of your small intestine. How does the gastric bypass affect weight loss? There are three main reasons why it is helping you to lose weight. The first one is restriction. So you have a smaller stomach pouch, you cannot eat as much, and you are typically fuller faster. The second reason is hormonal changes. There are changes to hormones and signals in your body that affect your metabolism, your feelings of hunger and fullness. Third is malabsorption. So when I mention that your food is now not coming in contact with a portion of your stomach and the first portion of your small intestines, this therefore affects how you absorb that food and there is a delay in the absorption of what you do take in until it's traveled further down. In regards to risks associated with gastric bypass, I'll first start by saying that bariatric surgery in general is very safe. Risks that are more associated with gastric bypass, which we will go in detail um, over in your consult, include things such as gastric leak, marginal ulcers, hernias, strictures or obstructions, vitamin deficiencies related to the malabsorption or effects on absorbing your medications, as well as dumping syndrome. Now let's talk about sleeve gastrectomy. Simply put, sleeve gastrectomy is surgery that is only on your stomach. And what we do here is we staple and remove about 70 to 80% of your stomach. So that is non-reversible and you do not get that back. Your new stomach is much smaller, uh, commonly compared to the size of a banana. How does the sleeve gastrectomy work to affect weight loss? There are two main reasons why it is helping you with weight loss. The first is restriction. So just like with gastric bypass, you have a smaller stomach, you are fuller faster, and you typically do not eat as much. The second is those hormonal changes similar to gastric bypass. Again, those signals are changed in your body that affect your metabolism and your feelings of hunger and your feelings of fullness. The main difference with this operation is that there is no malabsorption because we are not doing anything to your intestines. There are a lot of similarities between risks with sleeve gastrectomy and gastric bypass. But what I will highlight here um, in terms of a main difference for risk with sleeve compared to gastric bypass is around heartburn. So for the vast majority of people who do have heartburn before they have sleeve gastrectomy, as they lose weight, they will most likely have improvement or resolution of their heartburn and acid reflux. However, there is a potential to either um, have new onset heartburn or worsening of previous heartburn uh, to a point that it can be uncontrollable with medications. This does happen to only a small number of people, but it is a risk associated more with this operation than with gastric bypass. What are the benefits of bariatric surgery? Well, number one is weight loss. So on average, someone who has bariatric surgery can expect to lose about 60 to 75% of their excess body weight. Number two is improvement in your medical problems and your health. So a lot of patients are able to uh, get rid of some of their health issues, get rid of some of their medications that they're taking, or decrease the doses of those medications. Number three is having better energy and being able to participate in more things that you enjoy doing, having less aches and pains, and less fatigue. 
Earlier, I showed you a slide about how every organ system is affected by obesity and how there are so many medical problems that are associated with weight. This slide here is also very important in that it shows the impact of weight loss on all of these medical problems. On average, patients who have bariatric surgery are able to extend their life expectancy. They're able to greatly improve their quality of life, decrease their risk of death from diabetes, from heart disease, from cancers, and get rid of a lot of medical issues that are related to their weight. Patients who have bariatric surgery typically lose the vast majority of their weight within the first one to one and a half years after their operation. That surgery is the primary driver for rapid weight loss and a lot of weight loss. In the end though, what's important to understand is that this is just a tool. Obesity is a chronic disease and just like high blood pressure, diabetes, or any other medical problem, you do have to manage this for the rest of your life. Meaning that in the end, your hard work, good exercise habits, good lifestyle, good dietary habits, these are what's going to sustain you in the long term. Bariatric surgery is the tool to help you get better health and help you accomplish your goals. And then your hard work is going to be what continues to drive you in the direction that you want to be. A bariatric surgery program is exactly that. It is a program, and this program can last several months. On average, a typical program is at least six months. When you initially see us, your first appointment is a consult with the surgeon, and this is going to be a, uh, obtaining a detailed history about you and reviewing the operations in more detail and helping to determine what's going to be the best option for you. You then go through a minimum of six months in the program, and during this time, you are meeting with our dietitians multiple times to learn um, healthy eating habits, do's and don'ts around food and bariatric surgery. You are also working with our behavioral health specialist to make sure that you have a good stability with your mental health and you understand the depth of the program and the lifestyle changes that you'll be looking forward to. Once you've completed the program, you are reviewed by our multidisciplinary team and you're submitted to insurance for authorization for the surgery. Finally, you arrive to your surgery day and then afterwards you have lifelong post-op care with us. We are willing to see you for as long as you want after bariatric surgery and we will always be here for you as a team. Dietitian visits are definitely one of the core pieces to the program here. And during the several visits that you do have, you will be um, learning about healthy eating habits, um, things like food journaling, how to choose the right types of foods, how to eat properly so that you don't have issues or get into trouble after you have surgery, staying hydrated, working on protein goals. And I will mention here that this is the time when you learn about vitamins and the different supplements that you'll be needing to take after you have your surgery. After surgery, we see you quite a bit, especially in the first year. So you have several appointments with us um, as the uh, provider team, as well as with the dietitians and the behavioral health specialist if you need to as well. All of our providers are here for you um, definitely in that first year and as I mentioned before, lifelong if uh, that is your need or your desire. Um, you will progress through a diet after surgery. In total, this diet is about six weeks and you do learn about this in your dietitian visits. Um, I mentioned earlier you will be taking vitamins. These will be very important to help maintain um, your health and uh, we go over this in your appointment as well. And then you just continue to work on all of those goals and all of those things that you were learning before surgery about eating healthy, um, exercising, being more active, and leading a good lifestyle. Another great resource we have for you, um, either before your surgery or after your surgery, is our support group. And this is a really great resource that is led once a month by our dietitians, our behavioral health specialist, as well as some of the physical therapists here at Central Maine Medical Center. And this support group is just a time for some education, for camaraderie and discussion between people who have had bariatric surgery, those are in the program, those are who's still interested, as well as your support person. Um, a lot of people find great benefit from the support group and it really does help you to feel um, included and to feel like you aren't going through this alone. 
If you're interested in having a consult with us, please ask your PCP to send a referral to our clinic. We will then verify your referral and make sure you meet some of the baseline requirements and that you have um, insurance benefits for bariatric surgery. And then we will call you to schedule an appointment. Please allow probably a couple weeks for this process to happen, but if you haven't heard anything and it's been a few weeks, please reach out to our office and we'll check on your status. With that, I'd just like to say thank you so much for listening to our Bariatric Surgery Information Seminar. If you have any questions, please call our office at 795-5710. Otherwise, we can't wait to meet you at your consult visit.